Let me begin uh, this session with a reminder uh, to you that are here. Perhaps you've already done this if you want to, but others that are watching, you can sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter and uh, try to send that out. I've uh, been doing it for a little while now. Sunday afternoons, it's an automated thing. Boom. It'll be coming to your inbox if you'd like to get it. It's a free e-newsletter, email newsletter. All right. Uh, you can visit the website, uh, PastorRusty.com. You can sign up right there. It's free. And uh, the neat thing is you can cancel when I say something that you don't like. There you go. All right. Now, in this teaching session, I'd like to focus on a news release from Newsmax.com. It's hot off the presses, August 9th. Uh, uh, 2017. Those of you that are watching this, you, you know it's hot off the presses. Written by a gentleman named John Tozy, and um, it's entitled, America's Drinking Problem is Much Worse, 30 Million Binge Drinkers. Now, I've seen this headline today, and several weeks back, I got a couple of little things prepared, and I thought, I'm going to send this out to folks eventually, and the timing would be right. Well, it was today. I thought, okay, it's time to talk about this subject. So let's pray for a moment, and then let's delve into this a little bit. I'll give you some information, and then I hope we can speak a word of uh, encouragement. A lot of this is warning because you need to uh, beware of such things, and um, uh, maybe we can help Christians that might uh, be tempted to head the wrong direction on this subject. But uh, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father, we just thank you for gathering us around your word. Now, Lord, for these next few minutes, I pray that you'll quicken this word to our heart. And Lord, help us just to be discerning. Help us to see the fallout from sin. And Lord, there's a lot of things that can trouble us in this world. And certainly uh, alcohol, the, the strong drink, and all that it can do to us physically and emotionally and spiritually. Lord, we need to uh, think our way through this, and I pray you'll help your people. Lord, teach us your goodwill, and I pray that you'll deliver us from temptations, Lord, that might hurt us, might take us in the wrong direction. And Lord, I pray you'll strengthen us in our resolve, Lord, to be a holy people set apart to you. Lord, you want us to be filled with your Spirit, Lord, you have told us not to be drunk with wine, wherein is excess. We're to be filled with your spirit. So teach us your will. And Lord, help us to have resolve. Each mature believer, whether I'm talking to some pastors or Christian laymen, spiritual leaders, dads, moms, Lord, anyone under the sound of my voice that understands the importance of taking a stand here, I pray you'll strengthen us and help us to protect our youth and lead them in the right direction and raise them with appropriate um, uh, wisdom. And, and Lord, help us to be of serious mind. And we'll give you praise in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. As you folks know, I know you watch the news, you pay attention to what's going on in uh, our world, especially here in America. The Opioid epidemic is dominating new, the news, and rightfully so. We've got a terrible problem on our hands, and it's touching us in a lot of ways almost daily. With that said, I have to tell you, alcohol remains by far to be the most troubling drug in the nation. Of course, with most of our society peddling this poison on so many fronts, it simply is not offensive to most Americans. Alcohol-related problems may be drifting off the radar of our national consciousness to a growing degree, but the devastation of this socially accepted evil is just unrelenting. It's just not letting up. Like a hurricane that just keeps intensifying, alcohol's destructive influence just keeps building. Here's the article. This is, like I said, hot off the presses. Um, study reveals America's drinking problem is much worse, 30 million binge drinking. I'm quoting John Tozy. Americans are drinking more than they used to, a troubling trend with potentially dire implications for the country's future health care costs. The num now, there's nothing spiritual about this. This is just information. This is just news. So, you know, the angles they have, whatever, uh, the perspectives, the reasons they write, that's, that's all 
in the article, we have a, a certain priority by the time we get done. So just keep that in mind. All right, quoting again, the number of adults who binge drink at least once a week could be as high as 30 million, greater than the population of every state save California. According to a study published Wednesday in uh, JAMA Psychiatry, a similar number reported alcohol abuse or dependency. Between the genders, women showed the larger increase in alcohol abuse, according to the report. This should be a big wake-up call, says David Jernigan, director of the Center on Alcohol Marketing and Youth at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, who wasn't involved with the research. Quote again from this gentleman, alcohol is our number one drug problem. And it's not just a problem among kids. While underage drinking has declined in recent years, adult consumption increased across all demographics. The jump was also especially large for older Americans, minorities, and people with lower levels of education and income. The rise is startling, says Bridget Grant, a researcher at the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism and lead author of the paper, we haven't seen these increases for three or four decades. That's what she just said. The share of adults who reported any alcohol use, uh, high risk drinking or alcohol dependency or abuse increased significantly <clears throat> between surveys conducted in 0102 and follow-up surveys in 2012 and 2013. Researchers interviewed tens of thousands of people in person with similar questions offering a robust, nationally representative look at how American drinking habits have evolved in the 21st century. About 12.6% of adults reported risky drinking during the previous year of 012-013, compared with 9.7% in 0102. Behavior was considered high risk if people exceeded the government's daily limit for alcohol intake. Uh, set at four drinks in one day for women, five drinks for men, and they exceeded that at least once a week. Now, I just want to interject something here. I'll come back to this article. Um, and some of the things I've learned over the years when I speak on this subject, and this hasn't changed, I'll just insert something from another government agency. The dietary guidelines for Americans from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is this connected to alcohol. If you drink, according to our government, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, you are not to exceed one drink per day for women, two drinks per day for men. Now, this is the lost world talking about how to deal with this poison. You got to remember, when you consume alcohol, whether it's um, beer, wine, coolers, um, other stronger drinks, you are putting a poison in your body. Alcohol is a narcotic. Alcohol is a poison. And if you look up the definition of intoxication in the dictionary, it means that your system has been overwhelmed with the poison, can't get it out quick enough. It's just saturated your blood level. You'll pass out. You can literally die. It happens all the time. All right, so this is just a terrible poison. Now, the nation's dietary guideline says if you do choose to drink that poison, and I know you don't call it a poison, you call it wine, and I'm talking about strong drink now, and you call it beer, and you call it uh, whatever, um, distilled spirits. I always worry when I'm driving down the road and I see that sign, spirits served here. I thought, dear Lord, I don't want no part of that spirit. I try to get away from that building as quick as I can. But anyway, you're not to exceed one drink per day if you're a woman, two drinks per day for, for men. Here's the definition of a standard drink. 12 ounces of beer or cooler, that's one drink. So you're only supposed to have one a day if you drink. Eight ounces of malt liquor, five ounces of wine if it's strong wine. One, there's a difference between intoxicating wine and what's called new wine. And that is absolutely a distinguishment that uh, perhaps you want to fuss with me about. But uh, I gotta, I'll gotta, i connect you to some information if you're interested in actually being honest and researching the thing. 
But anyway, five ounces of wine per day, 1.5 ounces or a shot of distilled spirits, liquor, you like vodka, whiskey, etc. Now, if, if you drink, this is the world saying, don't exceed that. That's your dietary guideline. Now, binge drinking is taking five drinks in one day, at least once a week. Now, today I wasn't prepared to give you the blood alcohol content that makes you drunk and all that kind of thing, but this is a serious matter. And uh, when you start consuming it in short order, uh, really with the first drink, your ability to your motor skills immediately begin to diminish. And uh, with the more you drink, the worse it gets. But immediately when you put it in your body, it starts affecting you. And even if you think you can handle your liquor pretty good, that poison is in your system and it's eating away at every organ in your body, including your brain. Now, these are just facts, okay? Uh, you don't have to be a, a Bible preacher to uh, set yourself in agreement with these items. All right, now let's go back to the article. That three percentage point increase may not seem like a huge jump, but given an adult U.S. population of about 250 million, it represents roughly 7 million more people binge drinking at least once a week. The increase in alcohol abuse or dependency was even greater. Some 12.7% of respondents reported such behavior in 012-013 compared with 8.5 in 0102. That percentage increase is roughly equivalent to 10.5 million people at the current population. The surveys assessed abuse or dependence using standard diagnostic criteria with questions like whether people had difficulty cutting down on drinking or if they continued drinking even when it caused trouble with family and friends. Now the gist of this information, hot off the presses, this isn't old, is that America is drinking more today than she did a few years back. That's exactly what you're hearing. There's no single explanation for the increased uh, increase. Researchers point to economic stress in the aftermath of the Great Recession, uh, more uh, easily available alcohol at restaurants and retailers, and the diminished impact of alcohol taxes. As a percentage of average income, alcohol is cheaper today than at any point since at least 1950. Pervasive marketing by the alcohol industry and new products such as flavored vodkas or hard lemonade and iced tea may also be driving some of the increase among women and other demographics, says Jernigan. The consequences for health care, well-being, and mortality are severe. Excess drinking caused on average more than 88,000 deaths in the U.S. each year between 06 and 2010. The Centers for Disease Control estimates more than twice the number of deaths from prescription opioids and heroin last year. So when you're, we got a lot of problems in the country and we wouldn't minimize any of them. But one of the down, one of the things that's happening is our, our country's so accepting of alcohol. It's just everywhere. You know, restaurants by the cadoodles, they sell it all over the place. You, you got it all over the place. Uh, the sports industry, they promote it continually. And so, um, the problem is you get so used to it, you get desensitized to it, it's just kind of a part of the culture. And you forget that 88,000 people a year are leave, leaving here and directly connected to alcohol. And it dwarfs all the other drug abuse. But we're so used to it, we don't even pay any attention to it. I think you ought to pay attention to it. And the number one thing that you need to do is try to keep your young people as far away from it as you can. Now, mom and dad, that's going to be hard for you to do if you have the liquor bottle in your refrigerator. So if you really want to sow something good into the life of your children, get the alcoholic beverages as far away from them as you can and instruct them about the evil of this thing so that they're never tempted to take a lax attitude towards it like, oh yeah, when I get of age, I can drink. I just need to drink responsibly. There's no such thing. You can email me if you want to, write me a letter, but I know I'm going to make some of you mad. There's no such thing as drinking alcoholic beverages responsibly. You say, I'll have you know. Tell me all about it. 
The Bible says wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. Whoever's deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 21, 20 verse 1. Now, if you're a Christian, the Lord can help you and you can grow and learn. But everybody needs to understand that there's the responsible thing to do is to put that poison out of your life. Uh, it's strong drink. It's raging. If you're deceived by it, you think, oh, I can handle it. Many a fool has traveled that path and said, oh, I can handle it. They, they, it's a deception. You can't handle it. It will destroy your life. It will grow on you. But your young people, some of them are more susceptible to this than others, perhaps. But that's beside the point. You don't play Russian roulette with your kids. You, you do your best to keep it. And it will be a battle. You're in a society where it's all around you. And maybe your kids will stumble into it a little bit. But I'm telling you, if you take the lead and you set the standard and you provide the example, that's the most powerful um, resource against the advance of this ugly thing that, 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 that we could hope to have. You have to be a good example. You have to say, you know, sweetheart, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mess with that. And you know, if you don't want to do that, you're, you're sowing some things into the life of your children. It's gonna hurt them. Uh, it's very, very serious. Now the world even knows how serious this is. They're not many of these dear people are, are Christians, but they might be wise enough to understand that they don't want to put a poison in their body that wreaks havoc on their body physically and then can get a hold of them and destroy their life. Well, book of Proverbs wisdom will prosper a man if he's saved or lost. You understand that, don't you? Uh, that just applies to good living, period. Now we want you, we want you all to be saved, but um, if you apply book of Proverbs wisdom, you'll prosper even if you're a lost man uh, as far as this temporal world is concerned. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, the total, let's see, um, of these deaths includes uh, drunk driving deaths and alcohol-linked violence, as well as liver disease, strokes, and other medical conditions. The CDC says drinking too much is responsible for one in 10 deaths among working age Americans. Can you imagine that? That's your Center for Disease Control. One in 10 deaths among working age Americans is connected to drinking too much. Wow. The estimated cost of excess alcohol consumption is almost a year in the U.S. We pay for all of it, says uh, Jurgen Rehm, senior director of the Institute for Mental Health Policy Research at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto. The costs show up in higher health care needs, lost productivity, and prosecuting alcohol-fueled crimes from drunk driving to homicide. Uh, Reem says alcohol doesn't command the attention of policymakers the way tobacco, illicit drugs, or prescription opioids have. Now I'll just stop here and interject why. There's too much money involved. Our government's got their hand in the kitty. And there's billions of dollars out there in the greater culture surrounding this ugly thing. There's a lot of people making a lot of money off of alcohol. I have no hope that our country will ever do anything about alcohol from a governmental standpoint. As a matter of fact, we're already traveling the slippery slope to legalizing marijuana. We already have that in several states. It keeps growing. I crossed paths with different articles recently in the last month or so where um, it's not a secret amongst people that invest money and look at ways to make a few bucks. And there's money to be made in the ugly industry of marijuana. And they're moving in on it. And a lot of people don't care. Uh, and I will not apologize for saying this. If you're making money off a dirty industry like alcohol or marijuana, you need to repent. You need to get your mind and heart right with God. I don't like you, preacher. Well. At least I got one word in before you switch the channel. Um, we, we, we got the money element there. And, the, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil, all sorts of evil. And it, it's just real. Um, but uh, the response of society, according to this gentleman, should be commensurate to the level of the problem. Wow. Wow. Uh, yet there's no national strategy in the U.S. that matches recent high-profile efforts to combat opioids, smoking, or illegal drugs. Alcohol, Reem says, we just tend to overlook. 
And that's very real. And a lot of Christians overlook it. Uh, you've got to learn uh, to follow the Holy Spirit. Now, um, you know, I'm concerned about the thinking of Christians because you, you've got to get your mind renewed to the scriptures or you'll just think like the world. And uh, don't write me any letters about being legalistic. <clears throat> There's nothing legalistic about following the lead of the Holy Spirit. 